Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new Thought Fuel episode. As an engineer, I can understand the feeling you get whenever you get the opportunity to rip out old code and replace it with shiny new code. It's kind of like giving your code base a good power wash. Well, today we're going to talk about that in the context of DI. Whenever you're writing Android apps, the de facto standard for years has been Dagger 2. Basically, if your project isn't using Dagger for its dependency injection, they're basically going to say you should totally use Dagger. Well, now there's a new kit on the block called Dagger Hilt, and it's also made by Google. So this is officially their new recommendation for DI. It promises to make our job as engineers a whole lot easier. So today we're going to dive into Dagger Hilt and see what it's all about. Let's get going. Before we dive into shiny new code, I think we should take a few minutes to take a look at what it is we have been doing. I wrote an article a number of years ago showing how high of unit test coverage you can get whenever you use Dagger 2 properly to test an application. We're going to use the application that I wrote for that article as the basis, and eventually we're going to take it from the old standard and show you how quickly you can convert it to the new standard. So let's dive into the old application first, just so that we have a common understanding of what's going on. comes to the DI architecture of this application, there are three major components. The first one is the module, and this is always going to be necessary because this is the thing which actually creates the classes that you need to inject into your application. Typically, I would recommend that we organize these by domain. So for example, you might have one module which creates everything which is necessary for the networking portion of your application. Then you might have another module which creates everything for RxJava, and so forth. The second part is the component. This effectively binds all of the modules together into what's called a dependency graph. Typically, I would recommend that we organize these by activity. So effectively, we would have a one-to-one -one relationship between the component inside of our DI architecture and the number of activities that we have in our application. So that means if you have one activity in your app, you're going to have one component. If you have two activities in your app, you're going to have two components, and so forth. Now, the third part of this wasn't actually part of Dagger, but was used to assist with the other parts of it. I called this a Dagger Injector. This was effectively a static class which was used to instantiate each of those components. So it inflated each of those dependency graphs with all of the classes so that they were ready to inject later on. This Dagger Injector had one function for each component. So that was the architectural approach that we took to setting up our DI. Now let's see how we used it in practice. The very top level of this whole thing was the dagger injector, because that's what created the components, and the components are what created the modules. So we would use the dagger injector in the onCreate of every activity. That is where the object graphs are being built for us. We chose the onCreate of each activity because you could think of it as a constructor for subsequent screens that would show up later on. It always happened first, so that means that the object graph that we were building would always be available to subsequent services and screens which would need them. That is where our dependency graph is being created. Whenever we built this, we had to have one special module which required us to inject the activity into the object graph. This was used to extract the context from it. For those of you who have been Android developers for a while, you know that context can be the bane of Android development. It's sort of this magic object that you sort of need everywhere, even in cases that you don't think you should need it or other cases where you don't think you can even get it there, you need it there anyway. And Dagger makes that job a little bit easier, but it was still a bit clunky. This object effectively provides information about your app state and is incredibly relevant to almost everything. Once we had the Dagger Injector build that graph for us, it would live in static memory so that we could refer to it later on. So later on, every time we would have a fragment or something else that would need something from that object graph, we would pull it from static memory and inject the entire graph into that class. As you can see here, based on the construction and the usage of this, there's a lot of moving parts. Let's see what Hilt does to help improve on this. Hilt makes some pretty nice changes for us. We had a lot of boilerplate that we needed to set up, and Hilt eliminates almost all of it. Let's talk about the things that we don't need anymore. The first thing we don't need is the dagger injector. 
Instead, we're going to use a convention-based annotation instead so that it can do all of that work for us without us ever having to build any of this or type it out manually. That's pretty nice. The next thing we don't need anymore are components. Hilt has its own pre-built-in components that we can attach to, and it follows some of the practices that we were using pretty closely. So before, for example, we had one component per activity, as I mentioned earlier. Hilt has some pretty similar scoping rules with their own components. And the third thing we don't need anymore was that fancy module that we had to inject the activity into. Hilt can now just provide this information for you automatically. And yes, I did say magic because it does feel a little bit like magic. Okay, so enough history and enough theory. Let's open up that application and convert it to a Hilt application. The very first thing I'm going to have to do, of course, is include the libraries. So the Hilt libraries completely replace the old Dagger libraries. So anywhere that you reference Dagger, completely replace them with the Hilt references instead. This code example was pulled directly from the documentation. I didn't make any changes to it. The only thing you have to know is that if you're using a Kotlin project, you have to have Kotlin specific imports if you want to use some of their niceties that they've built around it. So don't use the Java version. It will work, but it's going to require some extra work on your part to accommodate it. The next thing we have to do is also include the Gradle plugin. So I'm going to go to the very root Gradle file inside of my project, include it in there, and once I've synchronized, I can jump back to my main application module and then apply that plugin. This is one of those things, like I said earlier, how we decided to use the Kotlin version of Hilt. It will smooth over some rough edges for us. So unless you want to be typing some extra code, then I highly recommend you just include the plugin and let it do the work for you. The next thing we have to do is create an application class. Now, for those of you who build larger applications, you probably have some form of an application class inside of your app already. But if you have a smaller app, or for some reason this wasn't necessary, then this will be a new requirement. This definitely wasn't needed before, whenever you had Dagger 2. This will be necessary because this is the place where Hilt builds the object graphs for us. So I'm going to create a class here in my sample application, and I don't need it to do anything. It can actually be an empty class altogether. The only thing I have to do is annotate it with at Hilt Android app. This effectively replaces the dagger ejector that I had beforehand, and it does all that work for us whenever the application starts up for the first time. If you're creating the application class for the first time, don't forget to include it in the manifest file so that Android can register it. So now that we've done all that work for our application class, I can now remove the dagger ejector. And as I mentioned beforehand, you can also remove the components because we don't need any custom components anymore. So the way that I had my project set up, I had a components package and I had a modules package underneath my dagger package. Well, now the modules package is completely redundant, so I'm going to move everything from the modules package all the way up just to the dagger package. That way, everything DI related sits in the same location. I can also remove the main module. In this case, this was the module that I was using to capture the application and the context. Like I said, this was a special use case earlier that we no longer need because Dagger Hilt can gather that information for us. So anywhere in my graph where I required a context, all I have to do is simply annotate that parameter in my function with at activity context. Hilt will do the rest of the work for me. In most cases, this will probably be the appropriate annotation. However, if we really need an application context, you can annotate it with at application context instead. However, in most cases, you're just going to stick with what I have here, which is the activity context. We're getting pretty close here. The next thing I need to do is annotate each of my module classes with at install in. This is going to be used to associate that module with a particular component. In this case, I'm going to use the activity component. Now, how do I know which one to use? There's actually several of them. Their documentation site has a list of all of the components that they have along with their scoping rules. Most commonly, we're going to be using the activity component. This is what we were doing beforehand where we had that one-to-one -one relationship between activities and custom components. In most cases, this makes sense because you're going to have your activity, which is surrounding and surviving all of those different fragments that will be contained inside of it. 
So that means every fragment that you have inside of your activity will have access to the object graph as long as its parent activity is around. Here's a table from the documentation which gives you a list of all the different components that they have along with when you should use them. They're pretty much tied to scoping rules. So if you need something to live throughout the entire duration of the application, then this wouldn't be the right place to put it, the activity component. You should be using this table to find the correct scope to put it into. Anyway, in this sample application, activity component was definitely the right place to put everything. I only have one activity throughout the entire application. If any of your modules have any singletons inside of them, you'll definitely want to remove those annotations. Instead of using the singleton scoping rule, all you need to do is attach that module to the correct component. You can use that table that I showed you earlier to show you what a suitable replacement is for the singleton scope. At this point, we've done four things that convert our application from where it was to where it's going. The first thing is, is of course, we replaced the dagger libraries with the hilt libraries. The second thing is, is we removed everything that's no longer necessary for this conversion. The third thing is we created an app class. This allowed us to annotate it with an at hilt android app annotation. So that way it can create the object graph for us whenever we create the application. And the third thing is, is we made all of the necessary adjustments to our modules to wire them to the correct components. So let's move on to the very final step, where we're going to use the results of our work. Now, everywhere that we've used the dagger ejector, such as in our activity, in our fragments, you can remove all of those references and simply annotate those classes with at Android entry point. The last thing we're going to do is go into all of the activities and fragments that were originally using the dagger injector and remove those. Now we just have to annotate those classes with at Android entry point. This is going to take care of referring to what dagger is already built and injecting them into the correct class. This application is a bit special. So in addition to having activities and fragments, I also have a custom nav host fragment. So since this class inherits from a fragment, I can also annotate this with at Android entry point. As you can see, this obviously has a few dependencies which I need to inject, and this is going to be the perfect way to do that. That's all that it takes to convert an application from the old Dagger 2 standards to a completely new Dagger Hilt standard. Now we're following industry best practices, not only by using the library, but also by using the patterns that it's putting on us. Thank you for joining me for today's Thoughtful episode. I hope you found it insightful. I have new content every Monday at noon exclusively for Android developers. If you haven't subscribed yet, I definitely invite you to do so. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks and happy coding.